created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look Many years ago, in a land called Egypt, there lived a very mean king. Egyptian kings were called pharaohs. Faster, better, more. The Pharaoh made all of the people of Israel living in Egypt work as slaves. They had to build the buildings and lift many heavy things. They had no time to rest and little to eat. They were not free and they were very unhappy. But the worst thing of all was, one day the Pharaoh decided that the firstborn sons of the Israelites would be killed. Oh no! They won't get my baby. I'll find some way to save him. Jochebed, the mother of Moses, decided to float her baby down the river. Shh, don't be afraid. I won't let the Pharaoh hurt you. Your sister Miriam will be right here to make sure you're safe. a home. I'll take him to the palace and take care of him there. Excuse me, princess. If you need a nurse for the baby, I know a good one who lives nearby. Her name is Jochebed. Thank you. Bring her to the palace. They named the baby Moses, and he was raised in the Pharaoh's palace as an Egyptian. But Jochebed was near Moses while he was a child to teach him right from wrong. Ha ha ha! Moses, time for your lessons. Now, did you do your homework? Sure I did. When I went out this morning, I saw a slave master hitting one of the Israelites. He was wrong, Moses. All people should be treated with respect. And Jochebed taught him that the Israelites in Egypt were unhappy because they were not free. Many years later, when Moses grew up to be a strong young man, he came upon some Egyptians who were treating people very poorly. You're lazy. Get up, get up and get back to work right now or else. Leave him alone. You shouldn't treat anyone like that. He deserves it. He's pretending he's hungry and tired because he's too lazy to work. I'm teaching him a lesson about... Leave him alone. Uh -huh. 
It was very unusual for someone to help an Israelite like that. Everyone told each other what happened. Moses was sure he had done the right thing. But he knew the Pharaoh would be very angry. So Moses left Egypt all by himself, knowing that he was really an Israelite. He wanted to go to another land where he would not have to see his people be treated so badly. After traveling for 40 days, Moses found himself in the land of Midian. In Midian, Moses got married and had a family. He lived in Midian for so long that he almost forgot about Egypt and about the poor Israelites. Until one day, Moses was looking after a flock of sheep up in the hills, and it was there that he saw an amazing sight. Come here, little guy. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> now I've got you. Huh? Moses, come closer. Uh, who's there? God. The Israelites in Egypt are unhappy because they are not free. Go to the Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Why have you chosen me? Don't be afraid. I will be with you. But will they believe me? I will give you signs to show the people that I am with you. Throw your staff on the ground. Now reach down and pick it up by the tail. Trust me, the people will believe you. Now go. And so Moses returned to Egypt to do what God said. Are you Moses? I have heard about you. What are you doing back here after all these years? I am here because God sent me. He wants you to free the people of Israel. Oh, he does, does he? Too bad for him. Who is this God, anyway? I've never heard of him. Have you? No, no sir, your, your most, most royal, royal wonderful, wonderful highness. highness. Well, then. This god of yours must not exist, right? Yes, your most royal, wonderful highness. Right. You there, come here. We're too nice to the Israelites. After all, they have a big, strong god on their side. Tell my slave masters not to give them any more straw for the bricks they make. From now on, they have to find their own straw. Yes, your most royal wonderful. I said go! Ha! Don't try and tell me what to do. I'm the Pharaoh. It's time for your bath, your royal highness. Uh... I won't give up that easily. And so Moses returned. God wants you to let the Israelites go free. Oh, haven't we already done this? It'll take a miracle before I listen to another word you're saying. See the power of God, the only true and living God. Oh! Silence! Nothing but foolish tricks. Besides, watch this.
Think twice before you try to trick me again. I am not trying to trick you. I am warning you. God can perform many miracles. <laughs> that proves nothing. Get out of my sight. I'll be back. And the next morning, Moses did come back. Pharaoh, let the Israelites go free. If you do not, God will let plagues happen to Egypt. The plagues will bring very bad things. No! See for yourself the power of God. It is blood. Just another magic trick. Ugh. Go away. You again? What do you want now? Let my people go. If you don't, God will let frogs come all over the land. Frogs will sleep in your bed and eat your food and... Frogs? I love frogs. Why, when I was a little boy... Uh, never mind about that right now. Who cares about a few frogs? Get out of here! Find Moses and bring him to me. Now. You, make the frogs go away. Do you promise to let the Israelites go free? Yes, yes, just get rid of these pesky things. God made the frogs go away, but the Pharaoh didn't keep his promise. He did not free the people of Israel. So God allowed more plagues to happen in Egypt. God let lots and lots of gnats come to Egypt. They flew everywhere. Flies flew everywhere. But the Pharaoh still wouldn't let the Israelites go, so the animals got very sick. And then boils grew on the skins of the Egyptians. And terrible hail fell down from the skies. And the locusts came. And ate their clothes. Next, everything was as dark as night for three whole days. Each time a plague happened to Egypt, the Pharaoh promised to let the people of Israel go free. But each time he changed his mind and broke his promise. Now will you let the people of Israel leave? No, I will not. I've tried to warn you, but you won't listen. Please hear me now, or you'll be very sorry. The last plague will be the worst. The firstborn sons of the Egyptians will die. What has your God done? He has taken my son from me. Leave Egypt at once and take your people with you. Moses told the Israelites to get ready to leave Egypt right away. He knew the Pharaoh might change his mind again, so they packed and left as fast as they could. I can't believe we're actually going. It's just as Moses promised. A land where we could be free. 
<laughs> it seems like a dream. But it's not a dream. At last, we're on our way home. So finally the people of Israel left Egypt on the way to their homeland, the land of freedom. By day, a pillar of smoke guided them. And by night, a pillar of fire showed them the way. But back at the palace, the pharaoh had changed his mind again. I was a fool to let them go. Who will build our pyramids and grow our food and, and fan me when it is warm? We must get the Israelites back. Call my chariot. In the meantime, the Israelites had reached the Red Sea. Moses, look behind us! The Pharaoh's army! They'll be here soon! Oh no! Moses, what have you done to us? We would have been better off living unhappily in Egypt rather than dying here in the desert. Don't be afraid. God will protect us. Don't hurry, Moses. Rest tonight. Tomorrow morning, raise your hand and stretch out your staff over the sea. It will part, and you will be able to go through on dry land. Till morning. Then we'll recapture them. And when morning came, Moses stood by the sea and waved his hand over the waters. And the 
the sea parted, just as God had promised. Come on, follow me. Come again! What are we going to do? Just wait. Then the sea fell upon the Egyptian army and stopped them. Thank you, God, for saving us. The Israelites passed through the Sinai Desert on their way to the land of Israel. When they were hungry, God sent them food. Mother, look! What is it? It was sweet, tasty bread that God had sent to feed the people. The Israelites called it manna, which meant, what is it? Mm. When the Israelites were thirsty, God sent them water. milk instead. <laughs> <laughs> when the Israelites reached Mount Sinai in the middle of the desert, they set up camp near the foot of the mountain. It was time for God to give the people his laws. Is happening Moses what does God want God is calling me I'm sure he has great plans for us I must go ahead and Moses climbed to the top of the mountain I am ready for you I have rules that I want to give the people of Israel. If they follow them, I will protect the people. Chisel out two stones and I will write them down. Always respect your father and mother. Do not kill anybody. Do not steal anything. God gave many other laws. He also told Moses how to build the home of worship where the Israelites would pray to God. God also told Moses that everybody should rest on the seventh day, just like he did when he created the world. Thank you, God. And this is how Moses led the people of Israel back to their homeland with the power of God and his sacred laws. These laws are called the Ten Commandments. Throughout the long journey, God helped Moses guide the Israelites home. Long ago and far away in the city of Jerusalem, a very special visitor came to town. His name was Jesus. He arrived on a beautiful Sunday in spring. What's happening? 
Where's everyone going? Haven't you heard? It's him! He's here! He's finally here! Oh! Who's here? The king! Come on! The king? Come on, let's go! That fellow on the donkey colt. The king on a donkey? He should be riding a golden chariot pulled by mighty horses. Are you sure he's a king? He looks so ordinary, like one of us. He may not look special, but did you hear what he's done? He's done the most amazing things to help people. Even when Jesus is very busy, he takes time to bless children. There was a beggar who had been blind all his life. Jesus touched him, and you know what happened? The blind man could see. And that's not all. I heard Jesus went to a wedding, and there wasn't enough wine. So he took barrels of water and turned them into wine. Water into wine? That's nothing. I heard he knows how to walk on water. Oh, he's such a wonderful man. Nice man. Make way! Make way! Come on, donkey. There's a good donkey. Come on. thinking, Andrew. Which way do you want to go, Jesus? Let's go to the temple. I'm excited to get back to my father's house of prayer. To the temple! Come on! This way! <sighs> it's been a busy morning. The temple will be quiet and peaceful. No, it's okay. It's okay. The people don't care. You can bring the donkey in the temple with you. <coughs> ah! You said this was a place of worship. Well, the more money you spend, the better the blessing. It should be a house of prayer to honor God, not to make money. But look, it's like an animal farm in here. This bird is 12 drachmas. 12 drachmas. Oh, that's much too high. Look at that. Oh. Leave here, all of you. Now. Come, let's go. Not everyone was happy to see Jesus. Some priests in the temple were very jealous that everyone liked Jesus more than they liked them. They didn't believe that he was the king. You're always telling us about this wonderful place called heaven. But how do we get into heaven? Trust in God and trust in me. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Forgive people when they do wrong. If people are hungry, feed them. And if they are thirsty, give them something to drink. If someone needs help, Will you people please stop pushing? We all want to hear what Jesus has to say. It's all right, Peter. Someone touched me. Who was it? There are so many people here. How could I know? Who was it? Who touched me? I did. I have been sick for many years. I wanted to touch you and be healed. Now you are better and can go in peace. Oh, thank you. From watching what I do and listening to what I say, you can learn how to enter into heaven. Love everyone, rich or poor. 
Most of all, I want you to learn to love your enemies. Hmm. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, was confused. He had followed Jesus for a long time, but he still didn't understand how to love everyone. He was also confused because he liked having money, and he always wanted more. I know I dropped it here somewhere. Excuse me, I've lost some money. Have you seen my coin? Does it have your name on it? One day, Judas decided to do something bad. Do you want to know where you can find Jesus? Yes. Who are you? I'm one of his disciples, Judas. I can show you where he stays for a price. Yes, take us to him. He's causing us too much trouble. The people like him more than us now. We must stop him. What will you give me if I tell you where he is? How's this? 30 pieces of silver. Don't worry. No one will know what you've done. All right. It's a deal. I'll come back soon and lead you to Jesus. That night, Jesus invited his closest followers, the disciples, to a special dinner. Hello, welcome, Peter and Andrew, and you too, James, John, Philip and Bartholomew. Hello, Thomas, Matthew, and James. Nice to see you, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas. <sighs> what a long, hot day. I'm tired. Oh, me too. And my feet are filthy from those dirty streets. <sighs> I could sure use a bath. I know. Let's get a servant to wash our feet for us. Good idea. Jesus, do you know of a servant who can take care of us? Certainly. <gasps> hey, what are you doing? I'm washing your feet. Lift, please. But, but I didn't want you to do that. I wanted a servant to do it. You're too important, too powerful to kneel before me and wash my feet. Please, Peter, it's okay. I want to do this. And me too? And you, John. May I? And so Jesus himself, their Lord and teacher, went around the table with a large bowl of water. He washed everyone's feet until they were all clean. Even though I'm your Lord, I'm also your servant. I want to take care of you. And I want you to take care of others, too. Hmm. Now listen to me. I have something very important to tell you tonight. Someone here is going to do something bad to me. Someone is going to betray my trust and love. Who? Who is it? Could it be me? Or me? Go ahead, Judas. Do what you are going to do. First, I will give thanks. We thank you, God our Father, because you give us bread to eat and wine to drink. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this wine, I want you to remember me. The disciples didn't understand yet what Jesus was saying or why Judas had run off. They were confused, but they continued to listen. This is the last supper I'm going to have with you. I have to go away soon, but don't worry. We'll see each other again, I promise. And I want you to remember, always love one another as I love you. But we don't want you to go away. We want you to stay with us, always. Do you really have to go? Yes, but remember what I tell you. I'll be back. Soon we'll be together again. 
Is someone trying to hurt you? If so, we'll help you, won't we? My dear friends, tonight you will be afraid, but everything will be all right. But now I want to go outside and pray. Do any of you want to join me? I do. Me too. You can sure, count on I'll me, go. Jesus. Me yeah, too. Me too. I'll go I'll with you. Right by your I'll side. I'll go too. All right, then follow me. And so Jesus led 11 of his disciples outside. It was a beautiful starry night. They walked and walked until they got to a hill called the Mount of Olives. It was late and the disciples were getting tired. I want to be alone for a few minutes. You'll wait here for me and keep watch, won't you? Of course we will. We'll be right here if you need us. <sighs> That's right, you can count on us. I'm tired. Mm, me too. I know. Let's rest against these rocks and this tree. Dear Father, I know you love me and are watching over me, but sometimes I'm still afraid of what's going to happen. Please help me be strong to do what you want me to do. Thank you. Amen. But back in the city of Jerusalem... Which way is he? <laughs> Follow me. Peter? John? Where is everyone? <laughs> Sound asleep. Oh, it's you! Oh, where am I? What's going on? It's okay. It's time to wake up. Huh? What's going on? Hello, Jesus. Oh! oh. oh. <gasps> Come on! We have to protect him! It's okay. I must go. Put down your sword. This is what God wants me to do. <laughs> Following the orders of Pontius Pilate, the soldiers who carried Jesus away treated him as though he had broken the law. This was because there were some people who did not believe he was the Son of God. And so it was that Jesus died on a cross with a thief on each side of him. The disciples were very, very sad. They missed their Lord. But soon, a great surprise would happen. Some of the disciples took Jesus' body and cared for it. They brought him to a cave to be buried, as was the custom in those days. Then they put a big rock in front of the cave entrance, so no one else could get in. And finally, guards were ordered to stay in front of the cave. Two full days and nights passed. And then on the third morning... You hear something? Yeah, what is that? Hey, what's going on around here? Huh? How is that stone moving all by itself? 
Look! Just then, some of Jesus' friends were on their way to visit the cave. We have everything we need, right? Perfume? Spices? I think so. Now we just need to talk to the guards. I hope they don't try to stop us. <gasps> Out of my way! I wonder why they're running. <gasps> Do not be surprised. Jesus is not here. He is risen from the dead. He's alive again. Go and tell all of his friends the good news. Jesus <gasps> lives! <gasps> we must go tell everyone. What good news! John! Angels! It's unbelievable! He's alive! Jesus is alive again. An angel appeared before me and told me the good news. I can't believe it! What a miracle! Incredible! Risen from the dead! Praise God! I must see for myself. It's so good to see you. I have some great news. Jesus is risen. He is alive again. Mm-hmm. I know that you've been sad lately, Mary. Why don't you get some rest? No, really. Everything I say is true. Uh, thanks for the news, Mary. That's really great. Why don't you go on home now? Believe me, it's true. Oh, Thomas, I'll see you later. I'd have to see Jesus with my own two eyes to believe it. Wouldn't it be great, though, to walk into this house and see my teacher's familiar face again? I can almost picture it now. 
Jesus would be standing here, smiling at me. Ooh. Jesus? Jesus! Is, is that you? Now that Jesus is gone, we might as well fish. Are you ready with the net? Uh-huh. Come on, John. Okay. And a one, a two, a three! All right. Let's pull her back in. Pull! 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 Oh, no. Not again. We haven't caught so much as a minnow. Let's try it again, I guess. A one, a two, a... Look! Who's that over there? Throw your net on the other side of your boat. What is that going to prove? Besides, we've already tried that. We already tried that! Try again! Why should there be fish on one side of the boat and not the other? Well, I guess there's no harm in trying. Come on. And a one, a two, a three! Whoa! Whoa! Pull! Pull! Look at all these fish! Just look at them! But how can that be? How did he know that? Who is that man? Some kind of miracle. A, A miracle? miracle? Jesus? It is! I can't believe it! It's him! Jesus! Jesus. Quick, everybody, pull in the nets. Pull in the nets and let's get rowing. You're back. I can't believe you're back. Yes, Peter, but only for a little while. You see, I have to go back to my father in heaven soon. Are you leaving us again? You just got back. We want you to stay. Don't be sad. You should all be happy. Rejoice. Happy? How can we be happy when you're going to leave us again? Because I died to make up for all the wrong things people have ever done. You mean you died for us? But why? Because I love you all. What do you want us to do? God wants you to be with him in everything you do. And the way to do that is to love everyone the way I love you. I'm going to make a place in heaven for you. Tell everyone you meet about me and about what I have taught you. And always remember, I will be with you forever. We'll never forget you. We will tell everyone about your love. And the disciples never did forget. They went through villages and cities in many parts of the world, telling people about Jesus and the great things he had done. Many, many years ago in the land of Israel, the people were waiting for a very important event. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. They heard the old story that one day God was going to send them a new king, a king who would protect them, bring them peace, and give the people more freedom. When is the new king going to come anyway? Our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents promised he would. They said he was coming. Yeah, but, but when? Even in King Herod's palace, people waited. Faster, faster! When will that new and better king get here? What was that? Nothing. No talking aloud. You will eat only bread and water for the next 30 days. No, 50 days. Oh. Old stale bread. Oh. And only four drops of water. No, make that three drops of water a day. What are you looking at? Then, one day in the town of Nazareth, a young woman named Mary had a most amazing visitor, an angel. Who are you? 
Please don't be afraid, Mary. I am the angel Gabriel. I've come to bring good news. News? For me? God has chosen you from all the women of the world to be the mother of his son. God has chosen me? How can this be? Everything is possible with God. You will have a son. He will be the son of God. And you will call the baby Jesus. Whatever God wants, I will do. Oh. Mary loved a man named Joseph. One night, an angel came to Joseph in his dream. Joseph, God has great and wonderful plans for you and Mary. Mary is going to have God's son. He will be God's promised king. Give him the name of Jesus and take good care of Mary and the baby king when he comes. Mary. My Mary. God sent an angel to tell me about the child. I love you, Mary. I love you too, Joseph. Soon after, Mary and Joseph were married. It was right about at this time that Augustus Caesar, the emperor of the whole Roman Empire, wanted to count the people who lived under his ruling. 25, 26, 27. There are 692 people from the town of Hebron and 839 from the town of Jericho. Add it to the list. 28, 29, 30. I'm getting tired. Send servants out to count all the people in my land. Everyone was ordered to go to their hometown so they could be counted. Joseph had to take Mary to Bethlehem, the town where he was from. Bethlehem was very far away. Excuse me, Shepherd. Do you know how far Bethlehem is? It's a long trip, 70 miles from here. Don't worry, Mary. I won't. I feel very safe with you, Joseph. For you see, Mary was expecting the new baby to arrive soon. Thank you, Shepherd. God be with you. And, and with, with you, you too. too. By day, they traveled many miles. We're more than halfway there. I'm sure we'll be there in no time. <laughs> Here, Mary. It's nice and cool. Thanks. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> At night, they slept in the open air. <laughs> The next afternoon, they saw a sign. Bethlehem was only three miles away. We're almost there. Soon we'll be in a comfortable room at the inn. There were many travelers in Bethlehem that night. Where can I get a good meal? Where's the inn? Where's a good place to stay? Good evening, kind man. Can you tell us how to get to the inn? Of course. Why not take the shortcut? Just go around this corner, then up the steep hill. You'll pass the granary, then go right, then left, then two rights, then your second left, then let's see. Right, left, right, left, and you're there. Thank you. You're welcome. Huh? Excuse me. Do you know where the inn is? Sure, it's right at the end of this street. It is? That's wonderful. Thank you, little girl. You're welcome. God be with you. And, and with, with you, you too. too. It was closer than we thought.
We're here. Yes. Quit pushing. I'd like a room for my wife and myself. So would everyone. We have too many people here now. My husband keeps saying yes, yes, yes. Tonight, we'll have to sleep in the kitchen. But we've been traveling for days. What's going on here? They want a room. What else? Uh, I'm sorry. We really have no more space at all. My wife is very tired. We came from very far away. Yes, so have a lot of people. And my wife is expecting a baby. I'll tell you what I can do. We have a stable out back. It's full of animals, but at least you'll have a roof over your heads. It'll be warmer and safer than sleeping out in the open. Thank you. You're very kind. Come, I'll show you. You have some important company. <laughs> I hope you'll be comfortable here. It's the best I can do. Thank you. We're very grateful. Let's try and make the best of it. During that night, a most wonderful thing happened. The baby was born, God's little son. We'll call the baby Jesus. Jesus. Mary and Joseph loved their new baby boy very much. I must wrap him to keep him warm and comfortable. The ox's feeding box. Jesus can sleep in here. And so the baby Jesus lay in a manger, surrounded by the warmth of love and the protection of God, who was now ready to let all of heaven spread the news of the baby's birth. That night, just outside the town of Bethlehem, shepherds were watching their sheep. How can you let your sheep walk around all night? He should be sleeping. My sheep? That one is yours. You make him go to sleep. I'm not going to walk way over there. You take care of him. No, you. No, you. Look, it's no big deal. You just have to be nice to him, that's all. What do you mean? Just tell him to go to sleep. Hey, sheep! Go to sleep! Come over here, little guy. It's time to sleep. Come here, this way. Greetings. Don't be afraid, shepherds. I bring good news of great joy. Tonight, a most wondrous thing has happened. Here in Bethlehem, the Son of God was born. He is Christ the Lord, the King that comes from God. His name is Jesus, and he is wrapped snugly in a manger. A manger? You can go see him right now. It is the happiest time of the world. Whoa! Wow. Ow! A king in a manger? Right here in Bethlehem? I always thought he'd be in a palace. Let's go into town and see what the angel's talking about. Let's go into town and see what the angel is talking about. I just said that. Then let's go. Whoa! Whoa. This way. Hey, where are you going? Get back with the other sheep. Did 
Didn't I tell you to go back? All right. But you'd better behave. Sheep. The angel was right. Look. He's really there. Hello there. What brings you here? We came to see the baby sent from God. We know about him because an angel came and told us. Then many angels came and sang about God's glory and peace on earth. The angel said he'd be wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Just like this. It's true. What the angel said is true. The Son of God, the King in a manger. Mary's heart filled with wonder as the shepherds told their story. She knew that her newborn child was the Son of God. Meanwhile, in the far distant lands of the East, wise men who study the stars saw something new in the sky. I beg your pardon. Not at all. It was entirely my fault. Uh, no, it was me, really. I wasn't looking where I was going. I was noticing that star. But so was I. What a coincidence. I was too. I study the stars. But so do I. And so do I. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. I am from the Far East. Ah, I am from the Near East. I am from the Mid East. Have you ever been to the furthest east? Yoo-hoo! Wise men! <laughs> Down here! <laughs> you fellas wouldn't by any chance happen to know where that big fat star came from. This was just what we were wondering. We've never seen that star before. It's a completely new star. Unless... Unless... The star is a sign from God. Of course! Oh, my, a sign, a sign from, from God? From God? Wow. That has to be it. The star is a sign from God? <laughs> yes, I see. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> what are you talking about? You see, it is said that a new and bright star would be seen in the sky when the new king is born. Really? But there it is, the new and bright star. It's also said that if we follow that star, it'll lead us to the new king. A new king! He's come at last! A star is a sign! So, are you going to follow it? Absolutely. Positively. Certainly. As long as it takes, no matter how far, guiding us on to the child, the chosen one. Starlight, star bright, glimmer of hope, glorious sight, shine on, shine on into the night. Lead us to our dream, the newborn king. Oh, yeah. What will we see? A palace of gold, royalty. Maybe he'll shine just like the star.
best wise men and bring us the news. So the wise men traveled far from the east. They kept following the star, never taking their eyes off it, not knowing where it would lead them. Look, the star is over Israel. We should go to the king's palace in Jerusalem. The newborn king must be there. Please forgive me, your majesty. I am so sorry to wake you, but the most unusual thing has happened. Tell me what it is already. And it better be good, or I'll have you locked up. Yes, of course, Your Majesty. It's just that there are wise men visiting from the East. Yes, yes, and? Well, they say they have come to see the king. So, send them in. <laughs> they say they've come to see the newborn king. What are they talking about? Do they think I was born yesterday? Perhaps they were thinking there was another king. Another king? Absurd. Ridiculous. How can there be another king? And if there is someone pretending to be a king, I want to know where he is. He'll be sorry, I'll tell you that. Yes, Your Majesty, of course, Your Majesty. But what shall I tell the wise men from the East? Tell them to get lost. No. On second thought, get my advisors. And hurry! Advisors! Advisors! Get in here! Yes, Your Majesty? What do you know about this newborn king? Oh, has he been born? Has who been born? The king! I am the king! We mean the other one. <laughs> what other one? The one you speak of. The one I speak of? I don't know anything about any king, except that everyone else seems to know about him. Why wasn't I told? Nobody tells me a thing. But we didn't know he was born yet. Who? The newborn king. <sighs> okay, if you're so smart, just where is this newborn king? The old stories say he will be born in Bethlehem. The stories say that, do they? That'll be all. Send these wise men in at once. Who told you to stop? Keep those fans going. And the rest of you, get back to work. Your Majesty, I present the wise men from the East. King Herod, we have come to meet the newborn king. And where did you hear of this king? We saw the star that God put in the sky. A star? From God? A beautiful star. A bright star. A sign from God. <laughs> we knew that if we followed the star, it would lead us to the new king. We want to worship him. This new king is not here. Then where is he? He's in Bethlehem. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean... Maybe you should go find him. Yes. See what I care. Go try and find him. And if you do find him, come and tell me where he is. I would like to worship the new king myself. Oh. Enough of that. When the wise men left the palace, they looked into the sky and saw the star once again. Look! There it is! On to Bethlehem! The wise men followed the star right into Bethlehem. Up this way! Come on, everyone! Come see the newborn king! And there, right above the manger, was the star. The wise men knew they had been guided to the right place. <gasps> see, see the 
who the king is here. What do you see? We've traveled from distant lands to celebrate the newborn king. May we come in? Please. We knew the baby was born because of the star. We followed it all the way here. We have brought gifts. The wise men gave Jesus gold and sweet-smelling perfume and incense. Thank you. Thank you for letting us worship the king. We thank God for his great wisdom. He has sent us his son. Praise be to God. Hooray for the new king. Praise be to God. Hooray for the new king. The wise men never did go back to King Herod to tell him the good news about baby Jesus. Everyone rejoiced and thanked God for sending them his son, the new king of the world. In the beginning, there was God. The earth was empty and dark. God looked over the surface of the world. It was time for something to happen. Let there be light and the earth became light. I shall call the light day and the darkness night. And so there had been darkness and then light. And that was the world's very first day. Now, God was just getting started. The next thing to do was to make the sky above the world and to fill the sky with clouds. And that was the second day of the world. On the third day, God separated the water from the dry land. God made all kinds of things to put on the land. There were rocks and mountains, valleys, deserts, and beaches. There were big islands and little islands. There were oceans and seas, rivers and lakes. But there was still more to come on the third day because God wasn't done yet. It was time to make all the plants God made tall trees and short bushes, vines, ferns, leaves, and flowers. God gave all the flowers a different size, color, shape, and smell. And all the grasses and plants and trees that make seeds and fruits were made on the third day, too. On the fourth day, God made a brilliant light in the sky called the sun to light up the day and a silvery one called the moon to add some light to the nighttime. And as a special touch, God added billions of twinkling stars to the night. On the fifth day, God made some creatures to live in this beautiful world. There were birds, More birds.
and more birds. And in the rivers and oceans and seas and lakes, God made fish. And the oceans were full of all sorts of amazing creatures. But there was still a lot more for God to do. On the sixth day, it was time to make the rest of the animals. There were so many animals to make. animals, and small animals. There were spotted animals. and horned animals. God's animals was beautiful. Now, on this sixth day, God did something else that was very important. God created the first man. And that man was called Adam. Then God blew the breath of life right into Adam. Where am I? Welcome to the world, Adam. Who are you? I am God. Look around you. All the plants of the earth and all their seeds and all their fruits, I give them to you. And all the animals, you have power over them as well. Everything is yours to use, to care for, and protect. Mm. Sit, uh, uh, sit, please. <coughs> <laughs> God looked over everything and was happy, and on the seventh day, God rested. Ah, it is very good. <laughs> Now, God wanted Adam to live in the most wonderful place that could ever be. So God planted a beautiful garden for Adam to live in. 
It was called the Garden of Eden. God made a great river run through the garden, and then the river split into four great rivers. Adam had all the animals for company in the garden. <laughs> wow, uh, uh, excuse me. Adam's first job was to name all the animals. This new request from God sounds like it's quite a job. I'm going to be as busy as a, a bee. I've got to search my brain and come up with a name for every living, breathing thing I see. You with the large brown spots Eating from treetops, your neck is the biggest part of you. Twisting round so easily, I believe your name will be Stretchy. Now that's pretty catchy. Or perhaps Giraffe will do. The jungle must be long to one so fierce and strong. I shiver and tremble at your growl. So you with the flowing mane, I give you the kingly name, Rory. No, that fits you poorly. Maybe lion is fine for now. Those flippy flappy things, I think I'll call them wings. And creatures they're attached to will be birds. The red breast will be robin, ostrich that big odd one. Parrot is the clawed one who repeats all my words. I'd say your fancy shell protects you very well, although it can slow you down a bit. So you with the scaly skin, I name you and all your kin. Pokey, not too hokey. Know your wordle, be turtle, yeah, just right. The swimmers in the sea, Will mostly fishes be with whale and snail and lobster one and all? The orange one is goldfish, cod the ice cold fish, tadpole has the bold wish of one day being thrall. The way you jump around, you hardly touch the ground and scamper so fast you're just a blur. So you with the cotton tail, you'll be known on every trail as Hopper. No, that's not proper. Oh, I have it, your rabbit, for sure. It's still early in the day, and I'm well on my way to naming every animal I know. Why, there's only half a million more to go. Looks like you've got a dear friend. I'd like to have a friend, too. <sighs> there were many animals to name. Adam grew very tired of trying to decide what to call each one. Now, God looked down on Adam sleeping there in the garden and Adam looked very alone. Hmm. And God decided that Adam needed a companion, someone to be with. God decided it was time to make another person, so God created woman. <coughs> what? Hello. Uh, hello. 
I mean, uh, hi. I, I mean, ah, uh, shucks. Where am I? You're in God's garden, the Garden of Eden. It's really nice here, you'll see. These are my friends, this is Monkey, and this is Dog, and this is, um, I haven't named you yet, have I? Gee, I guess you need a name too, don't you? How do you like Eve? Oh, it's lovely. Eve, I like it, and I like this place. Me too. You see, God made this garden for me. I mean, us, to live in. And everything's pretty, and you can eat anything you want, and... Not quite. Who was that? That was God. Oh. God's the one who made us. There is one fruit in all the garden that you may not eat. There is? This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You may eat of anything else in the garden, but you may not eat the fruit from this tree. Okay, tree of knowledge of good and evil. No eating. Absolutely no eating. Right. Anything else in the garden is okay, but not that tree. Definitely not that tree. Right. <laughs> and so Adam and Eve lived very happily in the Garden of Eden until one day. I'm so happy, life's a breeze, picking fruit from off the trees. La 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 la. Howdy. Oh, you startled me. Hello. What are you called? Why, I'm a serpent. Nice to meet ya. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Nice day, isn't it? A very nice day. Nice tree, isn't it? A very nice tree. Nice fruit. Uh, um, I, I have to go now. No, you don't. We're just getting to know each other. You don't want to hurt my feelings, do you? Uh, no. Good, because I want us to be very good friends. Now, as I was saying, it's nice fruit, isn't it? You can eat it, you know. E eat what? You know what I'm talking about. The fruit of this tree. You can eat it. <laughs> the fruit of this tree? No, I can't eat that. Sure you can. It's easy. It tastes great. <laughs> We're not allowed to eat that. God said so. God said we'd be in big trouble if we ate that fruit. Nah, you won't be in trouble. God just doesn't want you to eat the fruit from this tree. Because if you eat it, you'll get smart. Like God. What's the matter? Are you a chicken? I'm not a chicken. Well then, why not give it a shot? Just one teeny tiny taste. <laughs> 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 
God probably won't even notice. <laughs> and this fruit, I'm telling you, is incredible. Um, no, I really can't. I'll never tell. Try it. Well, if it won't kill me, and it'll make me smart, maybe just one tiny taste. Sort of a lick, not even a bite, really. Oh, how bad could that be? Wow! Pretty good, huh? I've got to tell Adam about this. Adam! Adam! You'll never guess what just happened. What? You know the fruit? Which fruit? You know, the one we weren't supposed to eat. What about it? You didn't, did you? I did. Eve, how could you? Adam, it's great. I want you to try it too. That serpent over there told me all about it. I just took a little bite, that's all. But Eve will really get it if we eat that fruit. I didn't get it, did I? I, uh, I guess not. Just take a tiny bite. God's probably not even looking. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. It was good, but suddenly I feel kind of scared. I just feel so, I don't know, so sort of naked. Good grief! I'm naked! <gasps> <laughs> That's better. What were we thinking? Uh oh. I think God's coming. I think we're in trouble. Big trouble. I think we're gonna get it now. We better hide. Uh -oh. Adam. Eve, what are you doing? We're, uh, hiding. Why? Well, we didn't want you to see us. We did a bad thing. We were scared. How did you know these things? Did you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Well, yes, but it was her fault. She talked me into it. Uh, it wasn't my fault. That uh, serpent talked me into it. I am not happy. You have disobeyed me. We're sorry. We're really sorry. I'm not worried. What can happen to me? You, serpent, will <gasps> crawl on your belly and eat dust forever. Ah, no. You will fear people, and people will fear you. This is your punishment for all time. And you, Adam and Eve, because I trusted you and you disobeyed me, you must leave the garden. Life was easy for you here, but it will not be easy outside. You will have to work hard and your children will have to work hard. You will know what it means to hurt and suffer pain. Here are some garments to keep you warm after you leave the garden. Now go. God put an angel with a flaming sword at the entrance to the garden. So Adam and Eve could never go back. But even though Adam and Eve had disobeyed God, even though they had to leave the garden, God still loved them. I'm sorry, Eve. I'm sorry too, Adam. I guess we're all alone now. <laughs> Not quite alone. And thus began Adam and Eve's new life outside the garden. From then on, their life was filled with joy and sadness, good things and bad. 
But even though they could never go back to the garden, God did not abandon Adam and Eve. God always watched over them, wherever they went, forever after.